Now we are going to present to Jules Urbach, founder and CEO of the Render Network Foundation. Please, a big round of applause. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Buenos Aires. And uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to give a, a brief overview of the Render Network, what we're doing, and how we see the future shaping up for uh, where content creation is going, where AI is going, and where we see the blockchain and other elements that are part of the uh, decentralized world playing a factor in this. So, Render Network. Uh, we created this system, uh, and our mission in general has been to empower artists and creators um, we've been doing visual effects work. I've been a GPU guy for decades. And uh, we have investors in our parent company, Otoy, including Warner Brothers, Disney, and others. Uh, we went to Academy Awards for our work with visual effects and faces. And the Render Network was created to decentralize a lot of the GPU power that was locked into Amazon, Google, and Azure. Um, we started the project in 2017, initially on Ethereum, now on Solana. And it's been a lifesaver. It's been deployed for almost five years now. Artists use it all the time. Uh, individual artists, um, big studios. Uh, we have Star Trek movies, for example, that are rendered on the render network. This is on decentralized GPUs, consumer cards that are in end users' machines. Uh, we have partnerships with companies like NVIDIA and Apple. Apple actually featured uh, the work uh, that's been done in render in their keynotes multiple times. And uh, we also have amazing things like the Vegas Sphere that has a 16K by 16K projection mapped video, those things require the Render Network to really um, deliver this kind of content in time. The Render Network provides such incredible speed and power for CG for any kind of media generation, but specifically the kinds of effects and visuals that you're seeing here in films and movies. Um, NASA uses it. It's, uh, it's, it's been an amazing year as well for the uh, foundation. Uh, we have a robust community uh, that's passing uh, you know, protocols and the equivalent of, um, of you know, things that allow us to build on the system uh, for new initiatives. It's really been an amazing thing to see the community drive that. And uh, we've also had incredible growth. Uh, we're doubling uh, in, uh, in usage on the system, and that's probably still only leveraging about 1% of the total addressable artists that our parent company uh, has brought in. So we're slowly ramping that up. Um, but again, it's been an incredible journey. Now, I want to talk about the future of rendering. Um, and I think that it's probably a good place to go back a bit and, and think about where everything's heading um, and, and look at where we started. So about 12 years ago, uh, Jensen, CEO of NVIDIA, brought me up on stage and had me present the centralized version of what is now Render. Uh, and he's been an amazing advocate and supporter of our company and, and now our, uh, our project. Uh, and what's interesting is that Jensen and many others talk about the future of where things are going as, uh, as something that's powered by the holodeck. So if you're not familiar with the holodeck, it's from Star Trek. I don't know if there's Star Trek fans here. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. If you are, you'll know where this comes from. The Star Trek holodeck is a room on the Starship Enterprise, you go into it, it creates anything. Um, it's rendering anything that you can imagine. You can speak to it. It delivers content on demand. It creates storylines. Sounds a lot like the world of AI-generated content today. And that's something that's remarkable because the holodeck, of course, is technology that's hundreds of years in the future. But like many things in Star Trek, we're seeing that come to fruition today. And as we all know, you know, there's a whole contention around whether something is AI or real. Uh, this is our work for Paramount. We're doing a lot of work on Star Trek, as you will see. And whether something is real or rendered, whether it's filmed in the 90s or created now, um, this is, of course, all CG. But when you start adding AI into the mix, there's a deep need for provenance. And that's also where having blockchain providing every element of what's done in render, you have a receipt for that. And as we look towards where this is all heading, um, the holodeck is real time, right? It's not just creating movies and offline content. It's also providing, you know, in interactive experiences, digital doubles. Um, and that's why there's such an interesting effort around that. So it's not just Jensen, right? You have Steve Jobs. You had Sam Altman talking about the future of ChatGPT effectively being the Star Trek holodeck. And what, why is that? And I think the reason for that is that as we get towards, you know, what we're seeing today with video generation models that are so good, that most people look at something out of Sora, and now, of course, there's many other uh, video generation models that are approaching that quality, and most people can't tell the difference between something that's, you know, generated or, or, or rendered or, or real. And what's fascinating about this is when Sora first appeared earlier this year, um, you know, I immediately saw that this was something that was much more than just 
a video generator. There's a real 3D model inside of the neural network in latent space. And in fact, if you take some of the Sora videos and you run it through a Gaussian spot system, you can extract a 3D model and there it is. It's inside of the neural network. So when you're talking about CG graphics in the future, you have to think about this as something that is both neural and ray traced, right? Ray tracing is the typical uh, mathematical calculations for CG up to today, and now you have neural rendering and AI that is changing the way that CG works. It's not just AI from a text prompt. It's, it's all the tools that artists have been using for many years, and even film cameras being fed into a system that gives you the controls of a video game, the power of AI, but also the tools and the provenance that we've been providing through the render network. And we can use that today, and these are some of the tests we're doing where we have the ability to take a model of a younger face or de-age an actual like Patrick Stewart. These are all internal tests. Um, and de-aging is actually one of the things we've, we've won a couple of Academy Awards for, but this is something that is made much simpler with machine learning and much more powerful. Uh, and then here's another example uh, where we can use this for makeup transfer. Something as simple as an actress spending four hours in makeup can be completely reduced to zero and the makeup can be scanned in once, fed in through uh, a neural network, and provided as a render live. And this is a 4K render. The left is image is showing the, uh, the underlying um, actor's performance. And as we were showing some of the Star Trek content, this is something that we've worked with the Nimoy estate. Leonard Nimoy passed in 2015. This is an example of a full um, CG head replacement rendering at 6K. And you know when we showed this to the family, they were like, it looks just like Leonard. It's, pretty remarkable how far we've come. And this isn't a deep take. This is an actual actor with digital prosthetics, and it looks amazing. And the fact that we're able to get this kind of quality and bring back the world of things like Star Trek changes the game. And I think this is something that is very much in the center of where we're going with the render network. Uh, as we uh, look forward, um, there's also many things that are related to provenance, right? So we've partnered with um, Endeavor, which is one of the largest talent agencies in the world. Um, Ari Emanuel, my good friend you know, who founded it, uh, was joined by Imad Mustique, who uh, founded um, Stability AI, and uh, he's connected us to many other players in the, um, uh, you know, in the AI ecosystem that are all looking to partner with us. We also have a federated system for compute clients. If you just want to run general purpose AI on our render nodes, you can do that, and we already have six amazing partners, and that's growing. Uh, we've also been working on pipelines for the Apple Vision Pro, which is one step towards the holodeck. Spatial computing is something that we're very excited about. And I want to show where this is being applied. So beyond working on Star Trek films and movies, we're building archives, which are basically multimodal, multi-experience um, museum pieces that touch on all those things. There's linear content, there's interactive content. Um, my best friend's father created Star Trek. Uh, he invested in our company and in Render to help build this archive of Gene Roddenberry's work, and we got Paramount Pictures on board as well, uh, and it's an amazing project, and I want to showcase a little bit of that today uh, and end on that, and you can see here there's a million documents from Gene Roddenberry's archive, all the scripts of Star Trek, all the things that he wrote, but then there's also the visual history of Star Trek as well. You know, how is the Enterprise um, in the physical world? How is it in the show? All of this stuff is in the archive. This is still all CG not even touching any of the AI stuff, but all of this is done on render. And one of the goals is we're going to build a full digital double of the, not just the Star Trek ship, but the actual, you know, universe that it's in. You know, the Earth, the, you know, the, the planets around it, the entire 40-year uh, history of the Enterprise, all of the Enterprises uh, that came before and after it, the actors, everything. And it's an amazing project. You can see it on roddenberry.x.io. This is an actual uh, live stream from it where you can just go inside of the ship and look at all the different uh, pieces of it. Every iteration of the ship is there, the history of Star Trek. It's, it's something that is a generally unique experience. And I think that's part of the future of how we're going to experience both video games, um, even theme parks, all of it. And the work that we're doing, I think, is so unique and interesting in this space. Um, and it is taking a beloved IP like Star Trek, which we have, um, you know, our team and, and many of the, of the partners that we brought on really generally, genuinely love the... Um, you know, love the, uh, love the story of Star Trek. And you can see here, I mean, even, you know, the aquarium at Captain Picard's ready room, all there. It's, it's really down to the last detail. Uh, this, is, this is what we're talking about when you have a world simulator. Um, we've also brought back the actors. So William Shatner, Captain Kirk, did a two-hour interview, has let, him, let himself be scanned in. Um, you know, he wrote a novel where Kirk is uh, rescued or brought back to life and Spock comes to visit his, uh, his grave. And that's in his book, and we, uh, we did something with that that fans love. The Smithsonian Magazine, Full Circle, 
they have the uh, start, original Star Trek Enterprise model. They covered uh, our project when it launched. And when we started to do little vignettes that were actually new pieces of, of linear content from the archives, all done on render, fans went crazy. Um, and we put uh, you know, a little teaser out around the time that we put out some of uh, William Shatner's interview. And you can see the, uh, the piece here. I'll play it for you, hopefully. Let's dim the lights and maybe turn up the audio. So that teaser, thank you. That teaser we put out last year, and millions of Star Trek fans loved it, and we can't wait to show more. There's a lot more that's coming. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that the project has really been a, a special, um, you know, treat for the fans, but also for us to understand and share with the studios and others really where we see the future of creation, content creation going. Um, but I want to close out on, on where I began with, with this forward-looking uh, roadmap, which is with the holodeck. So the holodeck, we've, we've almost shown really where the software and the tools and the pipeline can come in. But there's a hardware element to this as well. Otoy, my, uh, the parent company uh, that uh, started and launched the Render Network and now the Render Foundation is separate from that, invested in a company called Lightfield Lab. Uh, the, uh, the CEO of Lightfield Lab, uh, John Clarifin, is an amazing tactical genius. Um, and he's working on the actual holographic panels that, when you link them together like the Samsung video wall, will power that Star Trek holodeck. It costs probably tens of millions of dollars today, but you can build a room and you can walk into it and it's displaying a full holographic light field that requires 16 GPUs per square foot, lots of compute power. Um, but it is the future. And as we look at things like Meta working on these glasses or Apple working on their glasses, if you don't need glasses, obviously that is a better experience. That, I think, is the future that we're going to see five to ten years from now, and we are working with this um, with this company to really, you know, make sure that all the content that we're doing that, that works today on a 2D screen or on the Vision Pro or on Meta's future glasses also works on this. And uh, Bill Gates is an investor. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of excitement around this this kind of technology. Google's working on something similar, but nowhere near the fidelity of what Life Lab is doing. And uh, and I'll close with a video showing how it all works. And audio as well would be there. This is a room, by the way, with, with the uh, light field panels and uh, touch sensing all integrated. So this is going to be in theme parks and uh, concerts and things like that first. Um, the panels for this will be shipping in uh, next year. By the end of this decade, you'll start to see 100-inch holographic TVs and panels and the like. 
And eventually we see these things mean something that replaces your garage or your, your living room area with, with a window into anything, right? And that's something that's incredibly powerful for presence, for everything that we want from VR and the metaverse and all those things. Something that feels more, much more natural is going to be incredibly successful. And as the cost of these panels goes down to the cost of an OLED or even cheaper, um, I think that's what we're going to be experiencing uh, a lot of these, you know, a lot, a lot of this new future media on. And it's super exciting. And for the project we're doing for the Rhino Archive, the important part is we can go visit it. You can have people in it. We're working on that. That's coming out next year. And uh, that's it. That's, the, that's sort of my voyage for all of you through the future of rendering. And uh, we're super excited to share that with you all. Uh, please uh, feel free to connect with me after the talk. Thank you very much.